province, Afghanistan. Oh, some extraordinary pictures there. We'll get the view of Robert Fox, the uh, London Evening Standard defence correspondent, uh, fairly shortly on that message from Afghanistan. First, though, Charlotte with the rest of the day's news. Thank you, Mark. Good morning. The US government says it's detected seepage from the cap on the leaking oil pipe in the Gulf of Mexico. Integrity tests on the cap had been carried out over the weekend. I'd buy the octopus. There you go. I dollars. think that's yeah. the way forward, isn't it? Absolutely. Bit of a money earner. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you very much indeed for those headlines. Uh, let's take a look at... Very good morning. You're watching Sunrise this Monday with me, Mark Longhurst. We're live through until nine o'clock and still to come. Uh, Afo is joining us from The Guardian, legal affairs correspondent. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, so we better watch our P's and Q's. <laughs> uh, and uh, all that coming up in the papers shortly. And the uh, rest of the headlines too with Charlotte. But first we're going to update. More reaction to come to that extraordinary uh, report. Papers too coming up with Afo, but first Charlotte with the rest of today's news. Thanks, Mark. The US government says it's detected seepage from the cap on the leaking oil pipe in the Gulf of Mexico. Integrity tests on the cap had been carried out over the weekend. A ceremony will take place in France today to commemorate 250 soldiers killed during the First World War. Prince Charles and the Duchess of Cornwall will attend the service to reinter the bodies of troops found in communal graves. The soldiers died at the Battle of Fromel, which took place 94 years ago today. Charlotte, thank you very much indeed. It's time for the papers. Joining us this morning, the Guardian's legal affairs correspondent, Afa Hirsch. Good morning and Good welcome morning. to thank Sunrise. You. Um, you've got a legal story in The Sun, uh, first of all, which uh, touches on uh, the killing of Philip Lawrence, the head teacher. Yeah, Philip Lawrence is the um, head teacher who was killed back in 1995, I think it was, um, outside a school in West London when he tried to break up a fight. And at the time, it was very high profile because his killer, who was at that time a teenager, um, was sentenced to life. Um, his name is... Um, uh, Lawrence is Chindano, um, and he, Liarco Chindano, and he's now been released. He's actually, it seems like just yesterday, but he's already served 14 years. Um, and the son is, is suggesting that he's not safe to be released and that he still presents a threat to the public. And there's various pictures of him um, out and about with, as they say, unsuspecting members of the public on commuter trains. Um, but it really comes at a time when I think there's a lot of discussion about life sentences for murder and whether people should be released and rehabilitated. But he's not been released early as such. I mean, he no, has served he's his served sentence. he's served his sentence, and he's still actually under the control of the probation authorities. Mm. He's living in a, in a hostel, he's under a curfew, um, and he's obviously under strict conditions not to reoffend or he could be sent back to jail. Um, so it, it seems as if he served his sentence, and he's actually put out a statement through his solicitors saying, I deserve my punishment and I've served it fully. Um, but, right at the end, the, the son adds, it's understood that he's offered to visit schools to warn youngsters about knife crime. Statement from a solicitor saying that, uh, you know, I, I recognise a terrible thing when I kill Mr Lawrence. Not really reflected in the way the son has portrayed it's not, this, It's it? not. They portrayed him as a dangerous, yeah. unrepentant killer. Yeah, exactly. um, but I think it's important to remember he was a child when this offence took place. And actually, I think it's quite a cornerstone of our criminal justice system that we believe children can be mm. helped and rehabilitated. There's no evidence to suggest he is dangerous. Um, so I, I'm, not, I'm not sure what, what the, the outrage at his release is, other than the fact that he once did released, something yeah. very serious. Right, The Times. Uh, fears for integrity of the criminal justice system as police save money on forensic science. Is this part of the, the sort of damage from the cuts that are uh, being Yeah, assumed? well, the, the incoming head of the Forensic Science Service, Simon Bennett, who's taken over, um, has warned that cuts in um, forensic science and policing um, are affecting their ability to solve serious crime. And it's interesting because there's been a lot of talk about the DNA database lately and whether we're storing too much um, and, and, and one of the arguments in favour of having a DNA database is that it helps prevent serious crime. But actually, if you don't collect forensic evidence from crime scenes, there's no point in storing it on a massive database because you have nothing to match it to. So this really throws light on what police officers have been saying for a long time, which is that they're concerned about the lack of resources and that actually a lot of very serious crime scenes aren't tested for forensic evidence. Um, there, so there's I think a separate this... argument, or, or a separate debate rather, about, you know, should you be swabbed for DNA if you uh, commit even a motoring offence? And of course, you know, the, the argument about your civil liberties is, are you then being suspected of another crime? 
if, if a police officer asked uh, you for a DNA swab? Well, the, the controversy over the DNA database was because in this country, every single person who was even um, questioned by the yeah, police could yeah. have their DNA taken, even if they were never charged. Mm. And even on the most minor offences, like you said, a motoring offence. Last year, the Euro or two years ago now, the European Court of Human Rights said that that was a violation of our right to privacy. Yeah. So the, data, the, the database is now having to be scaled back. Um, but again, there's no point in having any database if forensic evidence isn't collected from, from crime scenes. So I, think, I think the Forensic Science service will probably try and keep keep up the momentum on this right uh, let's return to the issue of release because the Daily Mail has got the picture of those um, suspects in the Lawrence Stephen Lawrence case to face murder charge in months they claim well, this is another long-running murder case Stephen Lawrence the the black teenager who was murdered in 1993 and at the time, the five suspects um, were, were acquitted. Well, three of them were acquitted and two were never um, formally tried. And now um, there's a story in the Daily Mail that three of those suspects could actually face another trial. Now, at the time when Stephen Lawrence was murdered, that wouldn't have been possible because mm. of double jeopardy rules meant that you couldn't be tried twice for the same offence. That changed in 2005. And um, there's apparently new evidence, which means they could be put back on trial. Now, it's very unusual to have somebody tried twice for the same offence, and it involves some quite complex negotiations right. between the Attorney General and the Director of Public Prosecutions. But apparently there is new forensic material that's come to light. And uh, very quickly, let's just reflect in the sun, then, that size zero is... Zero now. Well, I apparently. think women everywhere will be breathing a sigh of relief about this story. But according to the Sun, size zero is officially over. Um, it says girls are ditching size zero for for hourglass figures and and new cosmetic procedures that inv actually involve injecting fat. Um, into injecting <laughs> fat. Injecting fat. I was about to say that's good news all round until you said that last bit. That Bar sound implants. Very good at all. Bar implants. Just eat another muffin. Much I, simpler. I, much yeah. You know, much I, more pleasant. There, there you go. Time. Anyway, <laughs> right. Thank you very much indeed. We'll uh, let you go off and have your breakfast or inject some fat, whichever you prefer. <laughs> Thank you very much. We'll see you later. Thanks uh, so much for updating us and uh, apologies for the delay there in uh, getting that link uh, set up. But let's get back to the rest of the news now with Charlotte. Thanks, Mark. Yes, in other news, David Cameron will use a speech later today to launch his so-called Big Society agenda. The Prime Minister will announce Ooh, help for community Sky projects. News. I'd buy the octopus for that money. I think that's Definitely. the solution, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Thank you very much indeed. Uh, let's You're update you on the front page effect. of the papers. This all, isn't it really? Very good morning. You're watching Sunrise this Monday with me, Mark Longhurst. We're live through until nine o'clock. Still to come, uh, all the morning newspapers with uh, Afa from The Guardian, including what Mr... Cameron may be taking to Mr. Obama. We shall see uh, fairly shortly. Charlotte, to the rest of the news. But first, we're going to uh, well, more reaction to come to that extraordinary report throughout the morning, of course. But let's get the rest of the day's news too with Charlotte. Thanks, Mark. The US government says it's detected seepage from the cap on the leaking oil pipe in the Gulf of Mexico. Integrity tests on the cap had been carried out over the weekend.